on a bill that will add $1.5 trillion to the debt over the next 10 years. The bill is nearly 700 pages. It was given to us at midnight last night, and I would venture to say no one has read the bill. No one can thoroughly digest a 700-page a bill overnight, and I do think that it does things that we really, really ought to talk about and how we should pay for them. This bill increases spending 21%. Does that sound like a large amount? Anybody at home getting a bonus or an increase in your paycheck of 21%? The exchange you just watched was me asking to have a 15-minute vote. I've been asking all day. I've been asking all week for it. We could have literally had dozens of votes today, but we squabble because people don't want to be put on the spot. So the reason I'm here tonight is to put people on the spot. I want people to feel uncomfortable. I want them to have to answer people at home who said, how come you were against President Obama's deficits, and then how come you're for Republican deficits? Isn't that the very definition of intellectual dishonesty? If you were against President Obama's deficits, and now you're for the Republican deficits, isn't that the very definition of hypocrisy? Don't you remember when Republicans howled to high heaven that President Obama was spending us into the gutter, spending us into oblivion, and now Republicans are doing the same thing. And so I ask the question, whose fault is it? Republicans? Yes. Whose fault is it? Democrats? Yes, it's both parties' fault. You realize that this is the secret of Washington. The dirty little secret is the Republicans are loudly clamoring for more military spending, but they can't get it unless they give the Democrats welfare spending. We doubled the amount of money we spend on the military since 9-11-2001. Look, I have family members in the military. I have retired members of the military in my family, and I care very deeply about our soldiers. In fact, you know what I would do? I'd bring them all home from Afghanistan. The war is won. People are talking about making a parade. Declare victory in Afghanistan. Bring them home and have a parade, and give them all a raise. $20 trillion in debt is bigger than our entire economy. You wonder why the stock market is jittery? Well, one of the reasons is we do not have the capacity to continue to fund a government like this. We've been funding it with phony interest rates. Anybody remember when interest rates were 5, 10, 15? I remember as a teenager them being 19 or 20 percent. But historically, they have often been at least 5. You know what happens to the government? when our interest rate goes to five and they have to borrow for Social Security and Medicare and all the other stuff we do, there'll be a catastrophe in this country. Already, interest rates are ticking up. Stock market is jittery. If you ask a question why, maybe it has something to do with the irresponsibility of Congress spending money that we don't have. People come to me all the time, they want something from government, I say, well, if you want something from government, tell me where to take it from because I'm not going to borrow anymore. Instead of nation building abroad, why don't we build our country here at home? Why don't we do some nation building here at home? The day of reckoning may well be the collapse of the stock market. The day of reckoning may be the collapse of the dollar. It has happened repeatedly in history when countries ruin their currency, when countries become profligate spenders, when countries begin to believe that debt does not matter. That's what this bill is about and you're getting stuck with a bill, not even technically you. It's the next generation being stuck with the bill. Your grandkids are being stuck with the bill. But mark my words, the stock market is jittery. The bond market is jittery. There is an undercurrent of unease amidst this euphoria you've seen in the stock market. A country cannot go on forever spending money this way. And what you're seeing is recklessness trying to be passed off as bipartisanship. So we've gotten together, they're all holding hands, and there's only one bad guy standing in the way. One guy's gonna keep us here till three in the morning. Well, you know what? I think the country's worth a debate till three in the morning, frankly. I think it is worth a debate on whether or not we should borrow a million dollars a minute. I've been saying that for a few years, we borrow a million dollars a minute, because I think it really brings it home. And we were talking about with my staff today, and they say, you know, it's almost two million a minute now. Two million dollars a minute. Can you imagine? And this is exploding. This deficit is exploding. And the really 
there isn't the alarm you should see. Nothing's been done in the last 40 years for one precise reason. There is no oversight. You realize what they are passing is all of the money glommed together in one bill. No one will read the bill, no one knows what's in it, and there is no reform in the bill. That I can say with absolute certitude. No one will read it, no reform, nothing gets better, the debt will grow. Recently they did a Pentagon study, it's the beginning of an audit, and they audited a part of the Pentagon. This partial audit shows that $800 million was misplaced or lost. Just $800 billion. I don't think they actually put it in a closet and burned it, but they can't find it. 